Welcome back. I'm looking forward to sharing the famous Islander Sewing Systems technique for putting on a collar stand, the burrito. In this lesson, you'll learn pressing tips for sharp points and professional top stitching preparation. I'll show you how to stitch accurate curves at both ends of the collar stand, and we'll eliminate hand stitching and gain more efficiency by utilizing the burrito technique. I'm gonna give you a couple of tips about pressing and some of my favorite pressing tools, wooden pressing tools. And we're gonna start with the clapper. Now you're going to want to press all your enclosed seams. So what I usually do is I take the iron and I push against that seam so that it's gonna be the flattest it can be. Then hit it with a little steam and then immediately put the clapper on and hold it down for just a few seconds. A Little bit of pressure, but you don't have to work real hard at it. And what that does is it flattens that seam down. And if you can see the difference between these two seams, you'll see this one's nice and flat and it's gonna take the top stitching beautifully. But make sure that you have really nice flat finish on both sides, because it can be deceiving you will want to press up your hem. And when we press up the hem, you're going to press it up 5 eighths of an inch, but only press the very edge. So we're just gonna crease that 5 eighths. So take your tape measure, your ruler, whatever you wanna use along, press and then clap. Press and clap and get all the hem on all three pieces folded up that way. But again, don't press all the way, just the edge. Okay, now let me show you how to get a really wonderful collar, and it's by using the point presser. So we have the collar, and we know that we have to clip off around that corner because we know at that point that's the hardest part, and we don't want any extra fabric that won't fit in there. You can always tell by just looking at it with your eye, and you can see that if we turn this right side out like this, you'd have all this fabric bunched up in there. And that's it will never look nice and never lay flat. So you've got to trim most of that off around that corner. And you can actually come in and come back out if you want and leave a little bit at the end and then come in and go back out again so that you get some of that out of there. Now you know all of that will fold up into that point. And so once you've done that at both ends, you're gonna use a wooden, point presser. Now, if you don't have one of these yet and you still want to hurry up and make your shirt, you can still make the collar without this. This just makes it so much easier. Because what I'm going to do is take each of the three sides and lay it right on here. And you see how that point presser gets right down in there. And then I'm going to press that seam allowance open. And the reason I'm pressing the seam allowance open is because it will turn nicer right on that seam. So anytime you want to turn something on a specific seam, if you press that seam open first, you'll get a much easier job of turning it around and getting it to turn right on that seam. And you want it to turn right on that seam because you don't want to see the facing from the right side. You only want to see the very seam edge of that collar. So we're going to Press right up to that point, give it a little steam. The wood will absorb the moisture so that that'll see how flat that stays. There's just something about the hard woods that absorb the moisture quickly and that allows the fabric to stay flat. Otherwise, if we didn't do it that way, the fabric just sort of after the steam leaves it or the moisture leaves it, it sort of kind of poofs back up, if you will. So having that nice flat surface really, really helps. So we just have one more side here. And then we're going to turn it right side out. OK, so now we have all the seams pressed open. Now we just need to turn it. So carefully turn it. Once we get it turned right side out, we want to poke those tips of the collar out. There's several different point turners on the market. They're all inexpensive. There's wooden ones. I like this one. Really, they all work. You can even use a chopstick. For years, I just used chopsticks from the Chinese restaurants. All you want is something that'll get down in there. And here's the key to getting that point out. And it's not going to be real sharp, but that's fairly sharp. 
it's to push the fabric over the point rather than jamming the point into the collar. And the reason is, is that there's a very weak seam now because we trimmed away so much of the seam allowance. And so by shoving and pushing too hard with the point turner, you can go right through the end and you've pretty much ruined your collar. So just carefully push that out. Now we're going to just press this really nice this is our firmest interfacing side. That's the side that's going to face the public. So if anything, we want to favor it to roll to the wrong side so we don't see that facing. But you should pretty much be able to press it right on that seam because it wants to go on that seam now. There's something about pressing that seam open that does that. And then you're going to hit it with some steam and then immediately tap it down with the clapper and you can see how flat that makes it. it. Makes it so much easier to do the top stitching and get the top stitching accurate when it's laying that flat. And I don't think you could ever get it this flat without the wooden tool. So we're just gonna clap it. Now our collar is ready. Now one thing you want to do, and you might want to put a mark on here with an erasable pen of some kind, which is the right side of your collar and which is the wrong side, so you'll be certain to be ready to get it onto the collar stand correctly. Now remember, you've got a lot of pressing to do, so you want to use the clapper any place you know it's going to be top stitched. So all the enclosed seams are going to be top stitched, as well as the collar, and you'll also be top stitching the sleeve placket. So make sure you press those all really nice, give them a hard press, and if you've got a clapper, please use it. And then the hem, remember that hem, you wanna do all three pieces, both fronts and the back, and remember, only press the edge. Now we're doing the top stitching. So I hope you've got everything pressed like we talked about, the darts and all the enclosed seams and the hem and the sleeve placket. So I've started top stitching, and so we're gonna top stitch those enclosed seams, that back to the yoke and both shoulder seams. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna top stitch them a needle width away. If you would like to have more top stitching on your project, then do, the, do a second row at a quarter of an inch. So that's an option. Uh, some shirts, I think usually when it's a little sportier shirt, you want the extra top stitching. When it's a fine dress shirt, just a single needle width away is best. But hopefully you've really got your seams nice and flat with that clapper. So you can stitch that needle width away. And then I've also prepared my collar by top stitching the collar. And when you top stitch the collar around, you do the same thing, a needle width away, but if you want double top stitching, you could do a second row. But we close up the raw edge of the collar just to keep everything nice and together. So when we're constructing it to the collar stand, the edges are together. So you can only do like about an eighth of an inch there. So do your needle width away all the way around the collar, but make sure you've marked one side of it so you know which side has the firmest interfacing in it because that's the side that we want to have up and we want it to face the public. So make sure you have that all prepared and now we're going to put the collar stand on the neckline of the shirt. So you will start with the collar stand facing which is the one with the softest interfacing on it. And our seam allowance is a quarter of an inch. So before I begin I'm just going to quickly mark a quarter of an inch at each end of my collar stand. And this will be really obvious why I did that in a second. That's all I have to do. And you know, I keep this little six inch ruler and a marker beside my machine at all times. And I use it often. And a lot of the marking I do, I do it as I'm moving along as opposed to doing it all in advance. Either is acceptable but that's just the way I do it. Okay, so we're going to sew the collar stand facing to the wrong side of the neckline. So we wanna start with the neckline against the feed dock. 
Why? Because it's the softest and it's the most biased. This already has interfacing in it. The neckline does not. And the neckline, because it's a curve, is a bias. So now I'm going to start right here at the edge on the wrong side and set my collar stand one quarter inch past the placket. So right at that line that I just drew. That's where I'm going to get started. And just as always, we'll start with the needle down. And this is a quarter inch seam allowance, like we talked about really very early on. Quarter inch on a neckline is going to allow you to stitch it very easily without pins or basting because there isn't as much rippling. When you have a 5 8 inch seam allowance on a neckline, you almost always get pin tucks in it because there's just so much fabric up there in the seam allowance rippling away because it's a curve. Just by cutting it down to a quarter of an inch, you'll have an easier time even if you use pins. Okay, I've got that anchored at the very beginning and now I'll come back and make sure I can match up those center back notches. So we've got a center back slit on the collar stand, match it up to the center back slit on the neckline of the yoke. So just don't pull on, make sure you've got your thumb under fingers on top, but don't stretch out your neckline. And then just stitch at a quarter of an inch Keep the edges lined up. That's what your left hand's job is. Your right hand's job is to keep the layers from shifting forward. And just carefully work your way around that curve, keeping the shirt nice and even with the presser foot. We'll just make our way to the very center back. And I know often you're going to think, that's not going to fit in there. It's not going to work. Well, it's a lot easier with a quarter inch seam allowance, but actually a lot of people think that there's more fabric in the neckline than in the collar stand. There really isn't. It's exactly the same measurement. So it's going to fit if you're just, don't let those feed dog take the bottom layer through faster. It just trust that it's going to fit. Now I'm going to come to the other end and find that quarter inch mark again and just hold on to that and keep on going around the neckline. I know people normally who don't have these techniques at their uh, call, they just stress out about getting a collar on a neckline for several reasons. Once you've done it this way, yeah, that stress will just be gone. You just have to trust that it's going to fit. Okay, and make sure you keep all the edges even. And remember, we're sewing the collar stand to the wrong side of the shirt. That's very important. So we've got that all sewn in. You always want to double check and make sure you didn't get any tucks in it. But with very little experience, you'll just know there aren't any there because the quarter inch helps keep that from happening to begin with. Okay, now the collar stand with the firmest interfacing on it is the next piece we're going to use. Make sure that you've marked the notch up at the top of the curve and also the center back. Now before we start, I'm going to mark my stitching line for around this curve. And the reason I do that is I notice that I'm really dominant right hand. So when I go around a right curve, I have a really nice, easy time of it. But when I go to go around a left curve, it never comes out quite the same. And it's very difficult as you're going around a severe curve to keep the seam allowance. So I just go ahead and mark the seam allowance by making a little dash quarter inch line along where I'm going to stitch around that curve. Not the whole collar stand, just around the curve. And that's just that little extra aid. Because I don't make collar stands every day. If a person's working in a garment factory where these techniques came from, she's making multiple collars an hour. She can practically do this in her sleep. She would not need to mark this. But you and I, we make a shirt here or there. 
Well, this little extra tip is very helpful to keep us on track and to keep us from having to rip it out. So here we go. Just get that around that curve. That's all you'll need. Now you're going to take the collar. We'll turn this over and we're going to sew the collar onto the collar stand. Make sure the firmest interfacing is on the top. So hopefully you've marked one side or the other so you can keep this straight. We're going to start by lining the collar up right with this clip. That's exactly where that collar goes onto the collar stand. So line that up to get started. We're going to stitch this at a quarter. And you have to be careful. You want to be very accurate here. Now match up your center notches in the back. And you'll notice the shape of the collar stand is in opposition in some places to the shape of the collar. And the reason for that is, is so the collar will curve around the neck nicely and over the shoulder nicely. So it's been, all that's been drafted in there. So make sure you honor that shape. The minute you don't honor that shape and take an inaccurate seam allowance or, or straighten it out, your collar's not going to lay as nice. So make sure you stay with the lines that were drafted into the collar. And then just go down and match up the other end. Hold those snugly, make sure your edges are together. It's okay to go slightly less than a quarter here because you're gonna stitch over this again. And the next time you could go a full quarter. Okay, so we've got the collar on the collar stand. We have the collar stand facing on the shirt. Now we're going to put them together and make a burrito. So it's right sides together. You're going to sew the collar stand to the collar stand facing and the collar is actually sandwiched in between the two. Now make sure when you're stitching down across here that you don't catch this clacket. So lay that on there. Make sure you've got that all lined up. Don't worry about the rest of it. Just get this one little corner lined up. Once you get your needle down and get that sunk in there, then you can go and adjust everything else. That's all a part of sewing without pins. You don't have it all lined up ahead of time, but you realize you don't need to. You do want to be accurate with all of your markings and, and stitching the pieces together. So it's not about being reckless or sloppy. It's just learning how to hold the fabric. So now as you see, I've got that nice little dashed line and I can stitch right on that dashed line and I'll know I have the same curve on one side of my collar stand as I have on the other. And I, when I first started doing this, I had to rip those collar stands out because I just couldn't get one curve to look the same as the other side. So that's why I resorted to marking my stitching line, but you only need it on the curve. So we're going to match up these center backs, get everything lined up. Now you see I'm stitching right on top of the previous stitching. So make sure that if you stitch the first time around at a quarter that you're catching right on top of that other stitching. That's just so that one won't show on the uh, right side when we turn the shirt right side out. I kind of call this sewing from point A to point B. Then now I've stopped at B and I'm down here at C and I'm going to get this all lined up and then I'll just stitch straight on down to this end. I'm going to trim off a little interfacing right here. I try to do this before I sew. If ever you've got some interfacing that sort of meanders past the cut edge, make sure you trim that away because it's hard to get an accurate seam allowance if that's in your way. Now, before we create our burrito by tucking some of the shirt inside the collar stand, I want to double check and make sure that I'm next to, but not stitched through the plackets. 
So this one is a little close and I think it'll be okay, but it's very, very close. It's almost on top of it, so be careful. And this one, and this one I'm too far away. So this one I'm gonna go back in and stitch just a little bit closer. You don't have to rip anything out. You just go back in and just take a few stitches closer to that edge because it really needs to be right next to the placket. Let me see. And there we have it. It's really close. Okay, now we're going to create our burrito. And this is the trickiest burrito you're going to do because it's such a small area. That collar stand is only this tall and we've got to shove the collar and part of the shirt up in there in order to stitch across the bottom of the placket. So here's how we have it so far. Now I want to just pull the collar out of the way and I want to fold the sleeve placket up out of the way because I'm going to stitch across here. So, but I don't want the sleeve placket down here. I want it up in there. If you, have the, if you don't stick it up in there, you don't have a filling. And so therefore you don't have a burrito, you just have a tortilla. That's what we always do in our classes. We go around and check the student and if they haven't put it in there, we tell them, nope, you don't have a burrito, you just have a tortilla. You've got to have a filling. And that'll kind of help you remember. So now I'm going to turn it over that I've got all that tucked up in there and I'm going to stitch right on that previous stitching or just to the left of that previous stitching just so that I'm taking even a little bit deeper seam allowance because I don't want that stitching to show on the right side. And don't panic if this is confusing you at the moment because it almost always does. I had to do it several times before it became second nature for me. You want to back up so you make sure that you've really sealed that seam down because this is going to be a stress point when we go to turn this right side out. And then we're going to do the same thing at the other end. So I'll do, go through it one more time. Get that collar out of the way. Fold, fold this placket up in because we're going to stitch on this seam. So we want to fold that placket right up in there, just out of the way. Make sure everything's nice and flat and then turn it over so you can stitch on the previous stitching. It really helps to turn it over because you have that stitching to go by. You'll make less mistakes that way. Okay, now before we turn it, we want to trim this curve. It's a lot of fabric to go back in there and always look at something like, why am I trimming this? Because if I fold this over and put it in there, it's all going to buckle up and be a big mess inside there and the placket won't lay flat. So I'm going to trim it about half of it off. And after you've trimmed that much off and you trim right up to where the collar, the collar's right there. So that's as far as I need to trim it. And then I need to trim here and down here because again, this is a very narrow spot right here. I don't want a lot of this to have to push up in there. So trim that and now we'll turn this right side out and see how we did. I don't have my point turner, so I'm going to use something else that I shouldn't use, but we'll get that all out there. And now all of this crazy business right here that you have so much trouble with, with other sewing techniques, getting that all up in there, it's all in there nice and neat for you. So I'll do the other end. See how we did there. like right up to where that slit is where the collar attaches. 
Now don't trim this off if you're not sure you got everything right. Turn it right side out. Take a look and make sure you haven't missed something before you start trimming. Because once you've trimmed that off, it's a terrible mess to try to get it back in there. Okay, so that's all in there really nice and neat. I've got to get my point turner and poke it out and get it nice and smooth. But that's it for right now. We'll have to press this all up really nice before we're going to stitch it. So we'll be doing that in the next lesson. Now we're going to go ahead and finish off the top stitching to our sleeve placket. So remember we sewed the sleeve placket to the wrong side of the sleeve. A lot of what we're doing is counterintuitive to what home sewing techniques are. Usually you sew it on the right side, turn it to the back, and then stitch it from the back and hope and pray that it's going to look good on the right side. Well, it sure makes a whole lot more sense to me, and I'm sure it will to you. Stitch it to the back, turn it over to the right side, and top stitch it on the right side. Now you don't have to worry, is it going to look good on the right side? It's going to, because that's the side you're stitching from. So we have our placket, and remember we pressed that in half? What's really nice about having pressed that in half is it keeps us right on track. It'll keep us from tweaking and twisting that placket. And then if you would like, you can do the same thing we did with the right placket down the front, is make a couple of uh, registration marks to keep you on track. And I think it's a good idea, especially if it's your first time doing it. After a while, you'll be more comfortable and you won't need to do that. So we've pressed this seam up in here. And what we're going to do is because we know it folds right there, we know exactly how much we have to turn under to make that lay. And that fold should lay right on top of that previous stitching. And then we're going to stitch a needle width away. So you get the first part started, sink your needle, and then come back and adjust. And again, that's all part of the pinless sewing. So then I'm going to come back here. I'm going to turn this under a quarter. And particularly if you're working with a bias like I am, you want to make sure that you have a nice snug tug on that bottom layer. And don't pull on the top layer if you can avoid it because that's the bias piece and it can stretch really easily. Lay it on there. Right on top of the previous stitching. And eventually, if you get it right on top of the previous stitching, then you top stitch it, it'll look exactly the same on both sides. At first, you might miss on the wrong side, but you don't care as long as it looks nice on the right side. And after a while, you'll become more proficient and it'll look great on both sides. It's so much more fun to sew on these beautiful fabrics. I just love the opportunity to work with something so lovely and it does behave very nicely for stitching. And then you have such a beautiful project when you get done. Okay, so now we've stitched our placket. We'll have to press that and shape it before we top stitch it. Oh, I wanna do the hem. Okay, so I'll just do one side of the hem. You're gonna do all three uh, hems, so that's both fronts and the back. There's a couple of really slick techniques that I want to show you here. One of them is called crimping. So anytime that you're trying to hem up a rounded hem, you'll know that there's more fabric in this edge than there is the edge we're sewing it to. All the way through this heavy curve, but then when you get to this inside curve, it's exactly the opposite. There's less fabric. You see how much fabric we lose right here? So if we sewed this side seam first and then tried to accomplish this hem, there'd be impossible because we would be missing fabric over here. Then you'd have to almost take a little pleat or tuck in the side seam to get the hem in. So that's why we put the hem in first because once we get this hem in and then we stitch this 5 8 inch seam allowance here, 
all of what's lost is in the seam and it doesn't matter anymore. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is crimp the curve. And what we're going to do is help that extra amount of that, that hem just get eased in a lot easier. The feed dog and the crimping are what's going to really help us here. So add a quarter of an inch. I want you to crimp only on the curve. Well, it's slightly past the curve. So this is what happens. I'm going to put my finger against the back of the foot. Now, if you have a slanted foot back there, you're going to need to use a tool. You can use a ruler, the tips of a scissors. I've been known to use whatever's sitting next to the machine that I can get up there. But you may be able to just put your finger back here. But basically the idea is I'm not changing my stitch length. I'm just stitching along at a quarter of an inch, but I'm holding the fabric up against the foot. So make sure you get an accurate seam allowance because this is what you're going to turn it on. And you see what's happening? I'm leaving that fabric right behind the foot and it's not going anywhere. And I'm holding it really tight. I don't want it to go anywhere. And once I start on the inside curve, I can stop crimping, but I'll still stitch. Now, do you see what has happened here? It has tiny, tiny little crimped spaces. I think the best way to describe it is a cupcake paper, that wrapper that wraps around a cupcake. It's got all those tiny little folds in it, but you can flatten it right back out. The same thing's true here. So if you get a little too tight of your crimping, it doesn't matter because it smooths right back out. It's not permanent. Okay, now the last step for putting this hem in is to remember we're going to stitch it from the right side. And I know that sounds ridiculous at first, but it's very, very easy to stitch it from the right side. And again, we want to stitch it from the right side because we want the feed dog to continue to encourage that curve into that uh, smaller area. And it definitely will do that for us. So on that stitching line, that quarter inch stitching line, just fold the fabric and then fold on the, the crease that we made when we pressed it. So you have a nice little narrow hem here. And what you want to do is stitch from the right side on that fold, the first fold on the stitching line. So we'll get this under here. You can actually feel exactly where that is to get yourself started. Okay. So once you've got your third hand holding everything in place, you just come back and fold in some more. Fold it on the crease. And here we're not having too much trouble because this is the inside curve. But we're about to approach the outside curve, which we shouldn't have any trouble here either because of all this crimping. It's just a matter of don't stretch it out just gently fold it on that stitching line and it wants to fold on that stitching line it really does and then the crease that you've already put in there does the rest and you just work your way across the shirt now i'm just going to show you this one front you need to do all three both fronts and the back. And I always double check when I go to do the second front because I might have just mismeasured or folded inaccurately and I want the hem to lay exactly even at the very bottom. So double check and make sure that they're going to do that by laying the two fronts together and make sure your fold is going to be exactly where the one uh, on the other side is. And this is why, remember we left some empty space down here that doesn't have interfacing in it. And the reason is, is because we have to double fold this and it's a placket, so there's a lot of fabric there. So you just really want to um, make it easy on ourselves, so that's why we eliminated the interfacing in the very end of the placket. Of 
Okay, so there's what it looks from the right side, and here's what it looks like from the wrong side. Oops, look at here. I missed that. And again, that's really stiff right there. So obviously I'm gonna have to go back and take that out and get that tucked under there. But otherwise we got the bulk of the curve in very nicely and actually stitched it from the right side. So it just needs a nice press. But you go ahead and do both fronts and the back and your homework will be to press your sleeve placket where you stitched it down. And when we come back, I'll show you the additional pressing for the sleeve placket. Press the neckline seam toward the collar stand. So that seam that's open inside there, press that up in there. And also press the collar stand along the top on both sides. Again, maybe use the clapper so you get a nice flat because the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna top stitch it. So that whole opening that's in that collar stand will be taken care of in the next lesson. Do not press under the edge of that collar stand at the quarter inch. We're gonna turn that as we sew. That's particularly biased because of the curve and particularly easy to get that stretched out. So please don't press that under a quarter. Coming up, we're gonna close up that collar stand. We're gonna finish the sleeve placket and we're gonna set a sleeve. That's right, we're gonna set a sleeve and we're not gonna use even one pin.